What's up everyone? How are you doing today? Thanks for watching STLT. Last week we did our first coastal night sail along the coast of Spain which looked pretty fantastic and we ended up in Benalmadena which is just south of Malaga. So I was looking through the footage of this week and I tried to find a way to make it a bit more interesting and I think I found a good angle. Quite an informative one for those of you who plan to roam the Met at one point in the future. One of Cruiser's main challenges as it seems on YouTube, is receiving packages in remote places. So this video is about what it's like to receive packages and how you can create friendships and crew opportunities because of it. Should be really interesting, right? I think no one really thinks about this being an issue because many associate cruising in the Met with having culture and civilization and infrastructure just basically around every corner. And that is true. There are marinas quite literally everywhere and you have good infrastructure and chanderies in the marinas. But if you need specific spares or brands for your boat that are not in the typical marine shop, you do have to order eventually. If you order in a marine store and it gets shipped from their, from their domestic warehouse, it just takes about two or three days and that's not a big issue. But specific brands that only deliver internationally, that still takes about five to seven days. That doesn't sound much if you're roaming the world on your own free time and you're used to cruising offshore for two weeks. But if you're in the med, planning this gets a bit more difficult because honestly you don't really know, or at least we don't, where we're gonna be in two weeks. Because the winds are so unsteady that you literally don't know if you go north or south to your next anchorage. And also there are many marinas and some are good and some are really, really bad and you don't know that before, so you kind of move from place to place rather quickly. That makes planning really difficult. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it is. So simply put, go to the marine store, you get it right away. If it's not in store and you have to order it through the marine store, it takes about two days. If you want to have it for a normal price and not pay an extra premium because you go to the chandlery, then you'd have to order on your own have an address and usually the marinas provide a shipping address. But there are some marinas that do not accept parcel unless you booked in and you're already there. Which is kind of funny because I think one of the key services of a marina next to having a berth is providing an address for cruisers. On the other hand, since everyone's so floozy bluesy about bookings and reservations in the Met, I also understand that some marinas say no. must be wondering what on earth we got. It's actually been really quite difficult to get these, even though it should be quite easy. We've been to many marine shops and they have them, but they really, they ask ridiculous prices for these things. We even tried to get like the non-official brand and we've got some relatively cheap ones in Greece for about 10, 13 euros, but here they ask 20 to 25, 30 euros for one. For aftermarket. Even aftermarket ones. So Alex found them on Amazon. What we got is oil filters. Well, we got about 10 of them for less than 70 euros. So about six euro, seven euro each. We tried to find fuel filters. They actually asked 35 euros for the original Volvo Penta one. And this one was what, five euros? It was quite a hassle. And as you can imagine, getting packages delivered on the boat is not that easy because we need an address. In a few places, particularly Ben Amadina, we found Amazon lockers, which is a real blessing because that is a really reliable sales pickup point. Shipping times on Amazon in Spain are between two and seven days. 
So that makes organizing a pickup in time more or less manageable. The downside is that you can't order anywhere but on Amazon. So an even better way is to rely on decent humans. We also approached that port because Andrew and Hibba wrote us on Instagram and they offered land-based support. And let me tell you, even if you're not crossing oceans, having someone on shore is invaluable. A piece of help that is easy for people on land that have a car. I can just do whatever I want and nobody cares. And a house goes a really long way for cruisers. So these winds are the reason we went into the marina. They just picked up like an hour ago. And uh, I don't know, we had to because I mean, the optimists are still out there. But yeah, the swell is actually coming straight into the marina. Okay, why did we make such a fuss about changing oil filters and why did we get 10? I mean, 30 bucks doesn't sound that bad, doesn't it? Well, marine engines are not like car engines. We measure runtime in hours and not in miles driven. While car manufacturers recommend to change the oil filters at about 20,000 miles, our generation of marine diesels want a new filter after 100 hours. That is a mere four days of 24 hours of motoring. Lots of people say that this interval is not really necessary, but let's just follow the narrative. Then that would mean that we're gonna have to do an oil change every month that we are actively cruising. But your boat has sails, doesn't it? Nah! You wanna be oh. a sailor, don't you? Zip it! We're in the Western Mesh. I have sailed half the world with half a gallon of fuel. That guy, right? Anyways, the same counts for engine oil. Five liters of Volvo Penta oil is about 50 bucks. If you go to the gas station, auto parts store, buy it online, or even at Carrefour, which is a big supermarket in Spain and France, it's 20 bucks. Okay, so in a way I have given you the advice to just ditch the marine grade lubricants and filters and go for the cheap car stuff. We didn't have any engine problems yet, but I'm sure there are people that have way more clue than we do. So let us know in the comments if we're doing a terrible mistake and if we make it even worse by telling everyone about it or if it's quite a sensible idea. So summing all of this up in three sentences. If you don't want to get ripped off, you'd have to order and organize delivery. If you don't have land-based support, you're basically f Make friends and help each other. All right, one more thing to add. We did not have that problem of overpriced items in the eastern part of the Med, especially Greece. But the more we went into western waters, the more expensive all the boat parts became. So if we stayed in that part of the Med, we probably wouldn't even have made that video. We all want to do what's best for our boat, but we also don't want to break the bank. If you enjoy entertainment parts of our videos, then just keep watching. Also, this part tells you how to make cruiser friends and find a way to cross oceans together. Good morning, lovely people. We have been neglecting you guys a little bit in the past few days and uh, it's been a strange few days and uh, I'm actually, we just got out of bed. We are now on our third day in Bena Madena and it's been quite a wonky day yesterday. We were here because of some strong 30, 35 knots winds that were coming from Gibraltar Strait into the Med and uh, yeah. This marina is not very well protected from southwest swell, so it's been quite weird in here. It's not really like short swell, it's just that the water keeps going up and down in this entire marina. So we've been slamming in our lines, we tried everything, we can't really get off the boat easy because we're in front of a concrete pier that is about a meter high. And at some point when the waves were big, and it was bad out there. The water in the marina just sank about half a meter. So then it was one and a half meter high. <laughs> it was really hard to get off the boat. We've been trying to work on videos, but it's all really not been working, has it? Mm -mm. No, it's been quite terrible. Our footage of Ibiza is really shit. So if we manage to make a nice video of that, yay us. 
we were just not very happy there, but uh, yeah. Because you can't fake happiness. Oh, I'm sorry. Hiba and Andrew invited us to spend a few days in their Airbnb just outside town and we really looked forward to having a rectangular bed. We're telling you all these stories of a life on the ocean and it often looks really dreamy and beautiful. Maybe you notice that sometimes we look tired and pretty beat. Even though we're in the midst of a coastline civilization and things look like we're simply just city hopping from harbor to harbor, 24-7 life on a boat is still exhausting. Especially in places like here, where 99% of people live in their homes. And a swelly marina is nothing of concern, because they simply sleep at home. So we are very grateful to Andrew and Hiva for inviting us into their home. And borrowing us their car, and picking us up yesterday, and everything they did. So. And getting parcel delivered. True, also that. So they've been awesome to us. And, uh, we didn't even know that, they just wrote us, yeah. so that's really cool. I just paid for another day in the marina, because we only paid till tomorrow, and there's one more day. The cool thing is that the first three days you here, and many of the marinas here down the coast, the first three days you pay like a elevated price, and then from the third, uh, fourth day on, you pay about five euros less. And I think at some point it goes even more down, so that's pretty cool. Off we go. I'll give you a stuff, okay? We got buttloads of laundry to do and they have a machine and we're very grateful that we can use it so we're bringing everything so it looks like we're basically moving in don't worry, we're not. We're, we're leaving again in Monday. Mm. Shouldn't forget the cake. It's on the counter. Thank you. Managed. Oh, oh maybe. God. Yeah. Oh. It's crazy how that goes up and down, huh? Yeah. Before you come ashore, you want to loosen the line a bit again? I'm sure you felt that in your bones as well. I know we should have gotten shock absorbers for the lines, but we didn't. And we figured a good way to not damage our cleats is tightening the bow mooring line, get further away from the concrete, and leave the lines slacking. It worked! Hey! No, it's fine, right? God, bye, Blue! I'm so sorry Seriously. to leave you behind like this. Well, it seems like a bit of a mundane thing that we're doing right now. Because we, you know, we portray this life of just cruising the Met and exploring all these places and, you know, from a Maslow perspective, fulfill our dreams and be all, you know, self-fulfilling and just thinking about who we want to be as a person. But honestly, in times of how much time we spend doing certain things and how important they are, we are most of the time on the bottom of the Maslow Pyramid, like looking for shelter, finding food, finding food, finding water, just being in a comfortable place so we can actually think about proper things to think about. <laughs> I think I'm pretty dumb today. Well, what you mean to say is basically it's hard to have philosophical thoughts and contemplate about the meaning of life, if so to speak, because you don't really have time for that. Not yeah, and it seems like the life that we live is only that, but it's quite the opposite. So whenever we have the chance to like be in a place for a while and have laundry and like, comfortable water. chairs and food and shelter and a good bed and air conditioning, that's like that's a big deal for cruisers. Yeah. So if you have the chance to help someone out who's cruising and who's like living the big dream and you kind of want to do the same later on, then just get in touch with them and just help them out because they will probably tell you what life is like and give you opportunities maybe in the long run. Plus so. you can share a lot of knowledge. It's really been fun talking about it. Yeah, it's good fun.
of the hole? It's like a rip in the seal. Oh. oh, we forgot that. It's a day and 10 hours. Day and 10 hours? Yeah, based on our average. We have to be arriving in daylight. Yeah, we'd arrive in daylight. Ooh, that'd be cool. And I think we'll be able to maintain this speed because the wind is not going to die down, it's going to get more. And the swell is also going to build up a bit more. YouTube is designed to spread videos that get lots of likes. So if you think this story is worth spreading, please click the like button. Thank you. So if you want to get in touch with the cruising community and you happen to live in a coastal area, consider becoming a land ally. You will make friends for life and you will probably be crewing on that boat. <laughs>